back to part eight of my Minecraft Let's Play in 1.19. My name is the Third Red Guy, and thank you so much for joining with me today. Today, we've uh, got a little bit of catching up to do for you. I've done a few things off of recording, just some quality of life stuff. So number one, and this is still a work in progress, but I'll show you the starts of it. I have a wall. It is too high. It is made out of the uh, deep slate, polished deep slate uh, fences, polished deep slate walls, whatever you call them. I actually need that coal. I'll be back for it in a second. It is made out of it. It is too tall. I don't have anything for the water quite yet. We'll work on that a little bit later. But I have a wall going around basically the entirety of the valley. In fact, if I had my elytra on me, I could actually show you since we've got that now. Let's just slap these suckers on. See the fun inventory management I have to do just to get my elytra out. So I've got this wall. It stretches all the way up here. It goes up this cliff face around Scott's tower that he's in the process of building, which I don't know if that's been shown yet. Then goes up this hill, down this hill, comes down here, goes straight over here like a line comes up these hills in kind of a funky manner it has to to get around some ravines comes all the way over here and then down to the water so i've got this entire section of this little valley now sectioned off and now i'm in the process of torching it all up now scott has plans to make a moss farm i'm gonna let him do that because he hasn't made any automatic farms for the benefit of the community yet so i'll leave him to it uh, but he's going to make a moss farm so that he can place these torches under moss carpets just to hide all the lighting. But the idea stands that he is going to help me in the process of getting everything lit up here so I can stop getting attacked by little mobs here and there. So at the very least, just adding the lighting I already have has made a huge difference. It's basically all the section over there now that just needs to get work done. So... Basically everything over here has been torched up except for this hill I'm noticing. I haven't touched the hill, so. So yeah, there's that. And then uh, the only other thing that I've worked on is over here with the villagers. I've placed the beacon, so it is ready to go. Once uh, Scott's got the beacon down by the strip mine currently, that's what I'm using to gather up uh, deep slate and stuff for the wall. So I'm going to leave it down there for now. But this is where it will sit when it's just normally in place. And then the only other thing I have... A little bit of lag happening right now. Ooh, a little bit of lag happening right now. The only other thing I've done is I've finally done it. I made myself an automatic sugar cane farm. It is running. It is by no means the most efficient thing. This is basically running it for a night. Uh, but I don't need that much sugarcane like this should be enough to make the paper i need for sustainable rockets so i'm not too concerned it'll keep putting out i'll keep getting paper i can use that to trade with villagers for some extra emeralds here and there a little bit of xp but uh yeah no super simple i didn't decorate it much at all just used polished deep slate some glowstone you got your you know your hopper mine cart systems for pickup so nothing crazy i haven't changed or, you know, I haven't done anything revolutionary here. Just something to work, something to run for now. So, the only thing I haven't, I really haven't checked is to make sure that it's offloading everything correctly. It's not getting bogged up, but I don't, I don't think it is. I think it'd be crazy if it was. I'm going to check it really quickly, just because now I've got myself in my head. <laughs> but, we do have something else, another project to work on today. Okay, yes, everything's fine. The farm is working just fine. So what we're gonna work on today is I'm actually, I'm sick and tired of not having any wool whatsoever. And um, I wanna work on getting some wool because wool is useful for lots of things, specifically with this bulk stuff. And I plan to go into some abandoned cities. What's happened since the last part, that's kind of a big deal, is I've gotten access to the world seed. So I can use that to get access to, number one, I can kinda, oh gosh, I'm pressing the button too many times. The one I can use that to help find myself some extra end cities so that I can get myself a couple extra pairs of elytra. I'll grab a couple pairs for some other people here on the server just so they've got something. I'll worry about delivering those once I've got more rockets. 
uh, to give them with it. So that's something I want to work on. But then there's also um, the fact that wool is useful, uh, or with the seed I'm able to find uh, the lost cities. So, um, not lost cities, what are they called? You know in the comments, let me know. The ones that are down, it's in the deep dark. I don't know what they're called. I haven't been to one yet. So the point is, I'm going to get myself to one of those sometime soon here. Um, with using that seed, but I need some wool. I need some wool before I make it. I also need to uh, enchant my hoe. So that I can uh, be able to get the sculpt quickly and stuff like that. That's all stuff that I need to do for another part. I also went ahead and did a little bit of exploring with the map. Just so I've got a map put up here. This is us. In fact, if I knock this off and replace it, shouldn't you be able to see the wall? I guess you can maybe see a little bit of it there. Is that what that is? Do I need to like re-explore that area? I don't know how maps work anymore, but I feel like you should be able to see this thing. Maybe not. Maybe that's it right there. That just might be stone. I just don't see it like anywhere. Oh yeah, that's it. I can see it. It's kind of abstract and poking through the trees, but I think that that's it right there. But maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe I need to fly over it really quickly to refresh it and then it'll be so much better. I don't know. Anyways, as far as the, the, the automatic wool farm comes, I've already got one sheep. I need to find another sheep. I have been on the lookout for quite a while as I built the entire wall around this place and as I started to light it all up. For the life of me, I cannot find a sheep. So that's another thing we, we need to work on. And then the one other thing that I added was in my resource packs here. I have added a light levels resource pack. This runs in addition to like my normal vanilla tweaks that I've got going on to change the textures. It just adds X's that indicate things like spawn rates. If mobs are able to spawn, for instance, all over there, right next to the house, there's a ton of area that mobs can spawn. So I've been going around using this to help myself light up the area. So just something I've got on hand, you may or may not, may not see me use that much, but just so you know, I'm using that as a resource to help myself light up the place. And uh, I will be sending it over to Scott so he can make sure he does it as well. The last thing we need to do here is to just turn on our fancy shaders because I want to have the world be as gorgeous as it can be. <sighs> Beautiful. Okay, we are gonna go out on the hunt for a sheep. Now, technically the best way to go out on a hunt for a sheep is probably using my elytra rockets, but um, I don't have that many rockets and I'm kind of running out of gunpowder. So, I'm not going to use my elytra. Plus, I think, doesn't that make it hard for things to spawn? Like, if I'm actively flying around, it's going to hurt the spawn rates of animals and stuff so that it's not going to give me the sheep that I want. I'm pretty sure that's right. Anyway, I have a good feeling about this direction, so I'm just going to start walking. And uh, I'm going to have to get outside the wall. going to end up having to cut... A door in the wall, which, by the way, this wall is by no means final. I have put this in as kind of a place marker to get things going. Um, I'm going to plan to create plenty of entrance ways that will look nice. And I have a couple of little tricks and surprises on how I want to make those work. So stick around for that. Um, easy way to stick around is to hit subscribe easy way to keep up with the videos as they come out but i have a cool plan i think for the walls that i want to put in uh, as far as visuals go i'm going to appeal to scott a little bit on how we want to make them look i'm thinking they will have the deep slate like fences as a base but we're going to add some other stuff in there and um we're going to put some walls in and we're going to make it taller give it some lighting that kind of thing to make it look really cool so when you're rolling up to this place you've got a uh, a good view so 
Anyway, I'll see you guys in a while. I'm going to wander through the birch forest and hopefully find myself a sheep sometime soon. Peace. I'm going to find a sheep. All right, we have found one. We may have found a couple of other animals, namely a chicken and a couple of pigs, along the way, but we have a sheep. And uh, ideally, I'm going to end up having about three of these. Three sheep. <gasps> Which there's another one right there. I don't have a lead for you, so... Oh no, he was he was just right here. I don't know what happened to him, but that's okay. I'm gonna save you. I, I think he ran away. Maybe he, he, he got eaten. He got eaten by a zombie. I'm saving you. So we're uh we're gonna get you back home, buddy. Don't you worry. We're gonna get you to a nice safe place where you will get to live out your grand life and great pastures, protected from any hostile mobs that do not fall in that hole. We I've got you. I'm your savior. I'm uh, ushering this guy back. One other thing I totally forgot to tell you is I also updated my vanilla tweaks a little bit. Um, I had turned down my friendly mob volume so much because the villagers were so loud with how many there are. Um, so what I decided to do was... Oh, gosh, I lost him. Come on, bud. What I decided to do is there's options in vanilla tweaks resource packs to make quieter mobs. So I have quiet made made quiet quieted quieted is that a verb past tense of too quiet I don't know um, I have made the animals like cows and sheep which I know are going to be part of farms that I'm building I've made them quieter I made villagers quieter I think the only thing like an idiot I didn't make quieter was iron golems which I 100% should do so that they're constant burning deaths aren't <laughs> so loud um, but I've made them quieter so you might be able to notice that other things will still be plenty loud but those specific mobs will be a little bit quieter which will make me a little bit less insane is kind of the hope because <laughs> man are they loud all right come here bud oh gosh I lost them again how do I keep losing them on like flat ground that's what I'm confused by where's the lead all the way back here and he just kept walking what a bro he could have run off like your friend but you knew see i taught you if you run off like that you're gonna get eaten yeah and it's gonna be terrible dude you're gonna get eaten it's gonna be real tasty for whoever eats you so good thing you're coming with me bud all right and we have got him back home we've got both of our sheep now i'm actually going to need to breed them to make a third sheep for my farm design. I've got plenty of wheat to do it. You tell me it's definitely dark enough. I've got plenty of wheat to do it. The only problem is I don't have another lead. So I've got that. And I also am making this wool farm underground. So I don't know how I'm going to get these guys down there. Necessarily. I wonder, will they just fall off cliffs? Will you... Will you? Oh, he turned his butt to me. Hey, will you fall off a cliff for me? I promise there's water at the bottom. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to look into that. But uh, before I worry about getting them down there, breeding them, anything like that, uh, we are going to build the farm first so that it's ready to go. And all I have to do is slip them into it. It is a beautiful day. And I've discovered something pretty beautiful. I've discovered that OBS has really, really nice hotkeys for recording. So you know whenever I was recording and you would see myself like, you'll see myself open my inventory and you'll probably see my face fly to the side. That's because I'm going to pause the recording. Well now, I can do this with a hotkey. And that means much better transitions for you guys. It also means that I have to make sure that I don't accidentally hit the button I bound it to all the time. I put it way off to the side. It's a button I literally never use, and I looked at it and went, huh, I didn't realize that the numpad specifically had a delete key. On this keyboard, it's in a weird place, so I didn't even know it was there. Well, guess what? 
perfect key binding button. Thank you, OBS. And there we have it. We have a little space that we're going to put our wolf arm into. Just torch this up a little bit. But uh, yeah, it doesn't take up that much space. It's just a little itty bitty contraption that we are going to trap some sheep into, constantly able to replenish their, um, their grass, and that there are dispensers that are going to be using shears to constantly shear them. And every single time that they eat grass, they regain their wool and this system will detect that and instantly shear them. So anytime they have wool that's harvestable, it goes into the chest. So it's super easy, super convenient. Um, not any more humane than what I've got going on up there. <laughs> but alas, if you didn't want us to do farms like this, Mojang, you shouldn't make it this easy. So now comes the fun part of uh, deciding what I'm going to build this out of. My initial thought was that I wanted to maybe make this out of diorite because I haven't built anything out of diorite yet. And I'm kind of, you know, on the train that diorite's not that good looking of a block. Um, but just like with the granite, which I didn't really want to build anything out of either, and I built the automatic pumpkin and melon farm out of them. I'm just, you know what, you get to see like that. I'm kind of of the same thought that a diorite could look good for a farm, especially one that I don't need to look at often, especially one that is, you know, wool-based, and I'm going to be getting white wool out of these guys. I could potentially, eventually, uh, make it so that I've got every type of wool being produced by them. But honestly, I don't think I have really a reason for any other colors of wool at the moment. I just need wool for the, uh, the cities, which I'm still <laughs> blanking on the name of. Hop in the comments down below. Let me know what they're called, because I'm dumb and I can't remember. Anyway, I was thinking we make this one out of diorite, but specifically the diorite bricks since that's a variant I have. And uh, you know what? That is a super cool looking block. I, I'm gonna put it out there. Mojang, make this a thing. Don't make this something I have to have a mod for. Make this a block. Th this actually looks really cool it gives that same vibe of being able to do the deep slate and the darker color creates this cool contrast. I actually don't like the contrast I've got going on for the barn currently. I actually want to make these a darker color, but that's a whole other story and a project for another time. I'm not really concerned about doing that. This gives that same feeling of going from the stone brick to something lighter. And this is cool. I'm going to have to make sure that Anybody that's living in this valley has this vanilla tweaks thing because that's a really, really cool looking block. I'm sure it looks okay as polished diorite, but uh, I'm sure that this looks so much better. I probably won't even need this much. I don't even care. I'm excited to use it. I might use it for other things. Can you make, can you make walls out of diorite? I can make stairs, I can make slabs. I guess you can't make what would be called like polished diorite wall. I can make just a regular diorite wall. No polished. Mud brick. I haven't found mud yet. I should do mud stuff too. Ooh. Blackstone, I forgot about blackstone. I could get blackstone stuff too. Okay, that's another farm. I could definitely do something out of blackstone. All right, but for this farm, we're going the route of uh, simplicity, and because it's a wool farm and my sheep are white, we're going to do it with this white brick. So, uh, cool. I'm excited. This turned out way better. I was expecting it to be something cool. This turned out better than expected. Ah, yes. The quiet villagers. You hear them? Do you hear them? Like, really listen? You hear their little, like tiny, tiny little noises. And then these guys come down every once in a while. And honestly, it's scaring me 
because of how quiet it is in here now and how loud they are. Listen to this. There's one coming. Got a tiny little Hans. Here I am. Do my work. Cool. And then it's just in your face loud. Yeah. We're going to have to fix that. Or we're going to have to fix you. We're going to have to shut you up. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh... Let's process some iron farm here a little bit. Let's add some more blocks. As you can see, I've spent some time AFKing and have produced an absurd amount of iron. And uh, am I going to stop? Has it been enough? Have enough iron golems fallen that I can end the atrocities of the constantly scared villagers? No. It is never enough. All right, the one thing I'm brushing myself up on is how these farms work. Now, I remember in one game I played, I made this really fancy and intricate one to be sitting above ground. It had everything hidden. It looked cool with some glass. I don't want to do any of that. Like, this is bare necessities. I'm okay with The reason I'm putting this stuff underground is so it doesn't need to be looked at that much. That's why I've just got this facade here and all the, you know, mechanical stuff behind it. Um, nah, this is going to be super simple, super easy. The one thing I want to make sure is that harvesting the wool is easy. So we're going to be starting from the bottom, actually. I know most of the tutorials and things that I've looked at and just the, the bare idea of it. I understand how this works. It's going to be that, uh, you know, the, the sheep kind of sit higher and the chests end up beneath it. Kind of the same deal as what happens with like the sugarcane farm where everything needs to be collected under it and i ended up having to expand upwards a lot more than i realized i needed <laughs> same deal there um i'm gonna need to do the same thing here now i just gotta think about this really quickly now that's where the sheep is gonna sit he's gonna be standing in this little thing like this now i'm gonna make this out of glass in the front just so you can see the sheep then there's gonna be some dirt Beneath that is going to be a block that has a Minecraft hop or a minecart hopper on top of a rail, a rail on top of a hopper. So it's going to go dirt, minecart, actual hopper, which means that the chest would sit in the ground. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I can do that. The only thing I could do is I could technically raise this roof. I could trim off another layer, and that way the chest would sit above the ground. And then I can make a second chest beneath it, so I can just have a ton of wool. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I wanna, I wanna make the wool. I wanna have more wool than I could ever potentially need. So, yeah, time to cut the ceiling back. And uh, like magic, it's gonna go from this to this. So we have trimmed back our ceiling. And now we've got enough space that we can rest the sheep all the way up and uh, be able to have our chest flush with the floor and then in the floor. Now, the one thing that's going to make this difficult is getting the sheep into this farm. Because uh, normally it's traditionally easier to kind of get them in from the top. But I don't really want to cut all this away. So I think I'm going to do kind of a side loading technique is the idea. But uh, let's go ahead and grab ourselves some glass and some... Uh, some grass, some glass and grass, so that we can build this farm. Alrighty, I got myself a stack of grass blocks. I decided that it was about time I put Silk Touch on my shovel, because for the most part, if I've needed anything with Silk Touch, I have just been using my Silk Touch pickaxe. But I needed to get enough dirt, and eventually I'm going to be needing lots of grass blocks and stuff like that, especially for beautification. Maybe in places where there's no grass blocks already. So about time that I just, you know, bit the bullet and put some silk touch on. So, alrighty. So it's going to go like this. I do still need to go get glass. But maybe I can afford to make this look a little bit nicer. Maybe the sheep won't be as sad with what I do here. If I, if I kind of like, you know, instead of making the traditional peak efficiency style one where they're in totally encased maybe i can make it feel like a little pasture you know maybe one that they don't have the freedom to move around in but a pasture nonetheless 
Okay, so I'm thinking, hear me out. I get them, convince them to come up here. And again, I'm gonna want three of them. So I'm gonna make three stalls. I'm thinking like that, that and that. So that's like perfectly three, one, two, three. Technically I could do four. Hmm. I could, I could do four. I could get them down here, put in some fences, breed them, and then kind of get them all mixed up in here. I could do four. I could do four. We'll, we'll do four little things, like so. And I will do a little bit of convincing. And I'll kind of like shove them in, like so. And then I'll just block them in. I could do something like that. And then the only thing that really needs to, to happen here is, uh, oh, I, I need to scoot up one, just because I have to make sure I've got enough, uh, I've got space for the observer behind it. So I'm gonna move it up one here. But uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of wing this. What's up guys? Sorry to cut this episode a little bit short. I ended up having a little bit of issues with footage. Not sure if I had something to do with discovering the hotkeys or not. But uh, at the end of this part, I was able to get those sheep down into that little part of the sheep farm. I uh, ended up just cutting a hole straight through the ground to get them down there, landed in water so they were perfectly safe and fine. And uh, yeah, I was able to breed them up and get them ready. So next part, you'll see me kind of pick up with the wool farm. And uh, yeah, just wanted to give this quick little little uh, aside here to let you know that uh sorry about losing that footage there i think it was quite fun to watch me figure that out but uh yeah we'll uh we'll, we'll not be having that kind of problem again all right well that's going to be it for this episode thank you so much for watching if you are enjoying the series enjoyed this video make sure to drop a like to let me know that you are enjoying it leave any comments down below i read all my comments of other things you'd like to see me do in minecraft or any other games you'd like to see me play as well and last but certainly not least make sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date with my videos even ring that bell so you can get notified when they do. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.